Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to our July money reflection, what I spent in July video. I did this video last month and you guys seem to really like it, but I'm basically gonna be going through everything I spent in July, reflecting on it a little bit, comparing it to my budget, and then we'll also talk a little bit about my plans for August and our August budget. So welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe, stick around, join the family that we have over here. My channel is a lifestyle channel. It's mainly vlogs and taking you through my life, taking you through my 20s. And a big part of that is finances and figuring that out as we become adults. I try to do a financial related video at least once a month. So if you like that kind of stuff, stick around. Those are some of my favorite videos to watch. I just like to kind of relate to other people and see how others plan out their money. Watching those videos really like got me into my own finances. So now I'm creating them because I just love them and I think you guys love them too. July was a pretty good month for me. It actually started off really really low spend. I was like this is the best I have done in a long time with spending. We weren't going out to eat. We were just kind of hanging out at home. It started off as a really really good low spend month. I will say towards the end of the month probably just like the last week of the month I had a few expenses that were not unexpected but I just kind of forgot about them. So that upped my spending quite a bit for the month of July. I just plugged in my mic so if the sound changed a little bit that's why. But like I was saying overall July was a really good month. I had a few expenses at the end of the month but still I feel like it was a good month. I was able to put a pretty good chunk into savings. Speaking of savings let's do a little savings update reflecting on my savings. So if you don't know I am currently saving for a wedding next spring. That is my main focus. That is where like all of my money is being allocated towards. I have pulled back on how much I'm paying on my student loans. I've pulled back on how much is going into my Roth IRA. Any money is going toward that wedding fund. So just a little bit of an update on the wedding fund. We are at 80% to goal which is so exciting. I think we're gonna hit our goal within the next couple months for sure, which is just such a like a weight off my shoulders and just feel very, very excited about hitting that number. Weddings are expensive, you guys, and it's difficult. Our families have been great and they're of course helping, but they're really expensive and so we, want to help as well. So we have a number that we are wanting to hit that we will allocate towards the wedding. I'm not even positive that entire sum will go towards the wedding. I don't really know what the total cost is going to be at the end of the day. Things change and things come up. So who knows, maybe we'll be over saving and we'll have extra money afterwards, which obviously anything we have extra will stay in savings. It'll just go towards our future. But yeah, we have a number, we have a goal and we are at 80% to it. We also have a moving fund because if you don't know, we are moving to Charlotte at the end of August. I made a whole video talking about that. I can link it down below. It's the video right before this one, but we're moving from Tampa to Charlotte, North Carolina. So I have about $3,000 put back for that. My goal was $2,000. I've gone over the goal. We try to do moving really cheap. So we do most of the moving ourselves. We do a U-Haul. We drive it ourselves. We try to do things as budget friendly as possible, but moving is expensive. So I do have that fully funded 100%. I did the math and our move last year, which was the opposite move. So Charlotte to Tampa and we spent about 2000. So that's why I saved 2000. So hopefully it will be good there. And then my emergency fund is at 52%. So once we reach our wedding savings goal, I'll be able to put more seriously towards our emergency fund as well as put more serious to my student loan debt and any other retirement and things like that. But it was really focused on that wedding as you guys know. So that's our savings updates. Let's get into what I spent in July. So here we have our July budget over here on the left and then over on the right I have my July expense tracker. As you guys know I track in a spreadsheet as you can see every single transaction that comes out of my bank account. This just helps me to hold myself accountable to my budget to really be able to see where my money is going, where I'm overspending, if I'm overspending. That is what we have over there. And then again, budget is over here on the left. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here to this expense tracker and I'm going to sort it by category. 
that way we can really easily fill out my July budget and see where I went over, where I went under, all that good stuff. So starting with the bills, you guys know these really do not change that often. My rent was $1608.35. I do split that with my fiance. People have asked me how we split our expenses before. It just kind of depends. We don't have like a super solid system or anything. We split our rent 50-50. We split utilities kind of. Like he pays for some, I pay for others. For example, I pay for the car insurance, but he pays for the electric bill. The electric bill is usually a little bit higher, but it all kind of evens out in the wash. I will say he buys the most of our groceries and if we got to eat and stuff like that, he usually pays. It doesn't really feel like his money and my money. It feels like our money, even though our money is not combined yet. We do plan to combine money. I know everyone has different opinions on that, um, but for us, it already feels like our money is combined and I just think combining it is simple. You can see where it's all coming in. You can see it's all coming out. You don't have to worry about Venmoing each other for stuff. So for us, it makes sense to combine money. So we will be doing that after we get married. I would say we split most things, but he probably pays for a little bit more things than I do. Everyone's different. And as long as it's working for you, if y'all aren't having money issues, then do whatever works best for you as a couple. Okay, car insurance is right here, 121.33. AT&T, my phone bill, 94.67. I had someone ask why that is so high and it's because I haven't paid my phone off. I got the new iPhone 15 a few months back and I just put it on the installment plan because why not? My actual bill for my phone is like 55 or $60, but then I'm also paying for the iPhone on top of that. So it's like $33 a month for two years to pay off the phone. I could go ahead and pay the phone outright, but there's no interest or anything. So I don't see why to pay the phone outright. I might as well just pay it monthly. Okay, and then pet insurance right here, 62.30. That is for my four-year-old golden retriever. So yeah, as you can see, not much difference between what I budgeted and the actual expense for the month. Same thing over here for these subscriptions. These do not change. So my workout studio here, 139. And then my iCloud here, $299. Okay, and then for debts, $300 on the student loans. I do that every single month. Like I mentioned, I do plan to increase that. I'm not sure what to yet, maybe $500 after we save for the wedding. I might do $600, might just double it. Right now, we're doing $300, which is a little bit, just slightly above my minimum payment. Okay, now for the fun part, the variable spending. These are things that do change month to month. And I already know there's two categories that I'm gonna be way over what I budgeted, but let's get into it. Starting with grocery and household. When I say household, I mean like if I go to Walmart or whatever and buy deodorant or toilet paper or whatever, to me, that's grocery. I don't really have like a separate category for those things. If I'm buying it at the grocery store, then it's grocery. All I do is I go over here to where the grocery category is and then I highlight all of them. And as you can see, it sums it up for me right down here. So we were right on track. Groceries at 291.22. I'm pretty happy with that. That comes out to less than $75 a week, which is my goal personally. Like I said, Will does buy the majority of our groceries. I would say our bill is probably between six and $800 a month on groceries for the two of us. We try to do most of our shopping at Aldi because it's really affordable. So we'll do like a once a week big Aldi haul, usually less than $100. But then we usually also have to go to Publix once or twice that week for things we forgot or whatever. So I would say we come close to like him spending another maybe five hundred on groceries. That's also just me guessing. It'll be interesting to see when we do combine our finances. I will be tracking for the both of us because I like to do it. So it'll be interesting to see how much we actually spend every month on groceries. Pet needs. This is one that is a lot higher this month because Franklin had his annual vet visit that I completely forgot about. So I did not budget for that. I budgeted 160, which covers his prescription dog food. And then if he gets a treat or a toy, that's what I budgeted for. But like I said, he had his annual visit this month, which was $300 after insurance. So the actual visit I think was 450, 
somewhere around there but insurance covered a little bit of it they don't cover a lot of the preventative care stuff but they do cover some of it so i paid 292 and then i also bought his dog food you can see for 136 and then i did get a dog walker one day we went to the beach so we were going to be gone all day so i got someone to come walk him in the afternoon so that brings the total for pet to 474.09 way 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 over what i budgeted for that's on me i didn't realize franklin needed his annual vet visit i don't realize it until they decline his prescription for his dog food and then they're like hey we haven't seen him in a year time for him to come in if you want that food and so i had to do that so way over on the pet needs but it is what it is it's something hopefully i will remember next year that around end of summer is when franklin gets his annual that visit medical i budgeted 20 i think i'm probably under i didn't go to the doctor yeah just my medicine for ten dollars car 50 i didn't drive much oh yeah really low on car 420 which was just sun pass i did so much better you guys last month i think my sun pass bill was like 20 or 25 dollars which means i was taking a lot of toll roads but i did pretty good this month at avoiding them with a bill of only four dollars and 20 cents that is a great improvement social activity 75 i did plenty of social activities this month but i None of them cost money. It was a lot of watching a movie or just hanging out. I'm not seeing anything that cost money, which is really nice. So $0 for social activity. Restaurant 75. I only have one restaurant charge for 644. Again, so much better than last month. I think last month I spent close to $100 on restaurants. Like I told you guys last month, that's really, really high for me. We don't go out to eat that often, but for some reason June was like a really big going out to eat month for us. And yeah, I don't think we went out to eat like at all in July. And if we did, it would have been something small that Will paid for. But my only restaurant charge was a Too Good To Go bag, which if you don't know what that is, it's an app where you pay a small fee and these restaurants give you these mystery bags of food that they didn't sell that day. So that was a fun, I made a TikTok about that. That was a fun restaurant thing that I did, but really good low on the restaurants. Bars and alcohol, I bet it's zero, yeah. I'm telling you, really good with the like going out. Didn't do a lot of that this month. Coffee, let's see, 33.03, a little high. I'm trying to think this $16 coffee charge, what that would have been. I must have bought coffee for a friend or something because that's really high. But the other two, those are like the price of my lattes, which is crazy, $8 and $10 for a latte. 3303 a little high but i'm okay with it okay beauty is the second category that i know i overspent in i did budget this way higher than usual i only usually budget about a hundred dollars for beauty and that is to get my nails done and then maybe if i have like one other little thing that i need but i budgeted 600 for this month because i knew i was getting my hair done oh yeah by the way i went back darker i did vlog this in a week in my life that is coming up soon but yeah i got rid of the blonde so we're back to kind of my natural color and the reason i did this one of the reasons is because of how expensive being blonde is last year i did the math and i spent like sixteen hundred dollars on highlighting my hair which is crazy so i wanted to go back something more low maintenance more natural so i did that this month and that appointment was 446.20 everyone always comes for me for how much it costs to get my hair done but that's how much it's always been for me, even in Charlotte. I think Charlotte was a little bit cheaper, but yeah, hair is expensive. She did a full low light, root smudge, toner, haircut, and it was like $450, which every time I say that on the internet, people think that's crazy. And I kind of agree it is crazy, but I won't really have to be doing much with my color going forward. So yeah, 446.20 for hair, which actually would have brought me under budget because I didn't get my nails done in July. So I would have been under budget, except I got Botox, which I haven't gotten Botox in over a year. The last time I got it was June of 2023, but we have some engagement photos coming up and I always just feel like my makeup goes on smoother and I honestly feel like it helps with my texture and my acne on my forehead. Maybe I'm imagining it, but I really wanted to get just a little bit for those engagement photos so that I could feel my best. Just a personal decision. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. So I got that for the first time in over a year and she did 30 units across my forehead for a total of $408. 
So beauty comes to $8.54.20. Definitely over budget. I hadn't originally planned to get Botox, but I just kind of decided on a whim to do it. So I kind of knew that the beauty category would be really high this month. Being a woman is hard. It's expensive. What can I say? Next up, gifts. Um, I bought my friend a coffee for her birthday and then I got her a birthday cake for a little party thing that we had here. So $31.99 for birthday or for gifts. Shopping miscellaneous. This should not be super high. $147.81. This was for a Princess Polly haul. I did vlog that. I spent about $60. I bought the entire Akatar series for $55. It was on sale for Prime Day. I feel like that's a really good price for five books. So got that. And then I had to buy a little bit of shapewear. I wear shapewear all the time if I'm wearing like a tight dress or something. And mine ripped. So I had to get some new ones. So I spent $35 on a little bit of shapewear from Amazon. I'm honestly pretty happy with that. I budget 100 for shopping miscellaneous and I went a little bit over, but that's okay. The newest thing in my budget that is taking me over is books. My new reading habit is expensive. I've learned, I mean, it's not expensive, but it's just something that I was not buying before. I was not buying books. So now that I have to buy books, that's something that maybe I need to add into my budget or something because they do cost money. They're not free. Last couple things, Uber, I budgeted 25. I spent 9.55. I've said this before. Uber is not something that's ever gonna bother me. If I'm drinking, I'm not even gonna consider driving at all. I'm not even gonna try to worry about it. So Uber is one of those charges that if it goes away over one month, I'm not stressed about it because to me that just means I was being safe. And travel, zero dollars. We did not absolutely no travel this month. So that is the July budget. Let's see what we spent. Okay, total spend for July. This is definitely higher than last month by almost $1,000, but $4,191.17 is my spend for July. I don't like seeing that. That's a little high. And I know, honestly, it was like the, the beauty stuff, but those things I do not do often. So if I want to do them every once in a while, it is what it is. I was still able to put a decent chunk into savings, obviously not as much as I was able to put in savings in June, but but a pretty decent amount. So we're feeling good. August is going to be an interesting one. Let's get into our August budget. I'm just gonna put screenshots of the budgeting for August up here, but August and September are both gonna be a little bit weird with finances because we're moving at the end of August. So I think our moving expenses will go into September. So it's kind of gonna be partially in August, partially in September, those moving expenses. I'm not actually going to be budgeting for the move in my August budget because like I told you guys, I have that money set aside specifically for our move. So any moving expenses should be coming out of that money. So it's not gonna be in my standard budget. I am going to track all of our moving expenses and make a separate video on how much the move actually cost us when we're done. I'm just gonna treat my August budget like a standard month. I'm not gonna take into account moving expenses. So starting off with the bills, nothing is changing with bills, subscriptions, or debts. Those should all be the exact same because they are the same every month. So nothing really changing there, but let's go into the variable spending, grocery and household. I'm gonna keep that at 300. Did a good job of keeping that under 300 this month. So I'm gonna keep it at that. That's about 75 a week. That's what I'm comfortable with. Pet needs is also gonna be a little bit higher this month because Franklin is out of his flea and tick medication, which is around $200. So I'm gonna budget $375 for pet. Again, that's a higher month for us for pet needs, but his food and then his flea and tick is pretty pricey. The flea and tick lasts six months. So it's not an expense I have all the time, but every six months I have to buy that again. Medical 20. I will leave that at that. Car, this is another one that's gonna be a bit high this month due to us moving. So I do wanna get my oil changed and I want to get my tires rotated. So I'm gonna budget 200 for car because I wanna make sure my car is in good condition before we drive it 12 hours to North Carolina for the move. So 200 for car, that's higher than usual. Social activities, 75. I think I'm gonna put this down to 50. We do have a few social activities this month, but they're mainly revolving around food. So I think that budget would be better allocated towards restaurants than social activities. Social activities for me is if I buy like tickets to a baseball game or we have to park downtown for something. So honestly, I might go even lower. Let's say 30 for social activities. Restaurants, I'm going to up this 
it's gonna be an expensive month i'm realizing i'm upping restaurants to 100 and that is simply because of the move you know how it is when you pack up your whole kitchen it's hard to eat at home i feel like you eat out a lot when you are moving because your kitchen's all packed up it's convenient i would still really like to try to eat healthy in august but I do think we're gonna be eating out a little bit more than usual. So I'll say a hundred. Bars and alcohol, I'm gonna go zero. Like I said, I do have a few social plans this month, but they're all more so around restaurants than bars. So I feel like that money is better allocated over to the restaurant section this month. Coffee, 20. I'm gonna leave that at 20. Again, with the move, I think we'll probably be buying coffee out. Beauty, okay, beauty can go back down to 75 because I don't have a hair appointment this month and I'm not getting Botox this month. The only thing that I know I'm gonna do, I'm doing it tomorrow, is getting my nails done. Other than that, I don't really think we'll be too much of a beauty heavy month. Gifts. I'm gonna put this down to 20. I don't have any birthdays this month that I need to buy any gifts for that I can think of, but I feel like something always comes up. So might give someone a little gift or something this month. So we'll just do 20 budget for that. Shopping miscellaneous. I need to lower this because I feel like my budget is kind of high this month so far. So I'm a little stressed about that. So I'm gonna put this down to 75. See, but then I'm like, I wanted to buy the Throne of Glass series this month, which is like $130. So, okay, let's do 130. And that is literally because I want to buy that Throne of Glass series. Uber 25. I think I'm going to leave that. Travel. I'm going to do 200 for travel this month because we are going to Charlotte in two weeks to go to our apartment. And I know there might be some associated charges with travel. Anything we do in Charlotte, I'll just put in that travel bucket. So that honestly doesn't leave me that much for savings this month, but it's just, it's gonna be an expensive month. I have some things I need to buy for Franklin. I have some car maintenance that I'm gonna need to get done this month. And then with moving, I think we'll be eating out more than usual. So August is gonna be a weird one with the budget and with staying in budget. I'm not gonna be too hard on myself if I don't stay in budget, but I'm obviously gonna do my best. My next financial video will be the how much our move cost video. And that's simply because I don't think my August budget is going to be worth sharing my August spending because I think it's gonna be a little chaotic. So I'm probably just gonna skip out on the what I spent in August video and instead we will do what I spent on my move video. Video. It's always good to go through this budget though because it makes me remember things like oh yeah I need to buy Franklin his tick medicine or we are gonna have some kind of social things coming up So it's good for me to take a look so that I can Identify other areas where I can reel it in because this tells me since we have all these other expenses that I probably don't need to be doing a lot of miscellaneous shopping, Amazon orders, getting coffee out. I need to try to avoid those little things. Since we have such big expenses this month, I need to avoid the little expenses because little expenses can add up. That's gonna be it for our July budget reflection and planning of the August budget. July was a really good month. I'm pretty happy with the things that I chose to spend my money on. And I always love reflecting and seeing where we can do better. August is going to be an interesting one we're going to try to keep it low but i know with a move things can get kind of crazy so august and september i'm definitely going to have some extra grace with myself but i'm excited to see how we do so i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always make sure you subscribe especially if you made it all the way to the end and with that being said i will see you guys so very soon in my next video bye guys